In this exploration of the depths of the Atlantic Ocean, we uncover the perplexing tales of voyages that vanish without a trace. These maritime mysteries have left us with more questions than answers, and today, we embark on a quest to decipher the enigmatic offense that unfolded over the vast expanse of the Atlantic. From unexplained disappearances to eerie circumstances, our voyage begins now. I'm AJ with Most Amazing, and these are the top 10 mysterious Atlantic voyages that disappeared without a trace. At number 10, is Mansa Musa's predecessor. The tale of Mansa Musa, ruler of the Malki Empire, unfolds a tantalizing mystery, an account that hints at the possibility of pre-Columbian trans-oceanic contact. In conversations with other governors, Musa revealed an astonishing story of his predecessor, a king who fervently believed in reaching the Atlantic Ocean's farthest limits. This enigmatic monarch equipped 200 ships filled with men, gold, and water, and provisions for four years. His command was clear, do not return until you reach the end of the sea or your provisions and water give out. These vessels embarked on an epic voyage into the Atlantic and only one returned with a cryptic account. The lone survivor spoke of an open sea that resembled a river with a formidable current. Beyond that flight, the 99 of the remaining fleet vanished without a trace, leaving behind an enduring mystery. The king, undeterred, assembled 2,000 more ships taking 1,000 for himself and the rest for his supplies. He sailed himself into the Atlantic, never to return, thereby setting the stage for Musa's ascension to the throne. Al-Umari's record of this conversation stands as the sole testament to this remarkable journey, as it finds no mention in any other medieval Arab accounts or Western African oral tradition. While historians debate the authenticity of this voyage to reach the Americans, the absence of evidence remains a stumbling block. The survivor's description of a river-like current suggests a familiarity with the Canary Current, flowing from West Africa to the Americas, potentially facilitating in Western travel, but posing challenges in return. Some scholars speculated that Columbus's third voyage aimed to investigate similar claims, yet overall, the evidence of pre-Columbian contact between Africa and the Americans remains elusive. If you're enjoying the channel so far, you can support it by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. I would really appreciate it. At number nine, the National Airlines Flight 967. In 1959, National Airlines Flight 967 a Douglas DC-7B vanished over the Gulf of Mexico with 42 souls aboard. Its last radio contact reported clear skies, but it soon veered off course and disappeared from the radar. Search efforts found scattered debris and bodies, suggesting a possible mid-air explosion. Yet the timing of this explosion remained a mystery, with some arguing it occurred on the impact with water, while others believed it ruptured in the air. Adding intrigue, one passenger, William Taylor, used a ticket issued to a criminal, Robert Venon Spears, sparking suspicion suspicions of an insurance scam. Spears later reappeared with Taylor's car, but no direct connection to the disaster. The disappearance of Flight 967 remains an unsolved enigma, leaving us to ponder the true events of that faithful night over the Gulf. At number eight, John Cabot's final voyage in 1498. Cabot, a seasoned Italian navigator, embarked on this pearliest journey under the patronage of Henry VII of England, seeking the fabled Northwest Passage. Setting sail with the fleet of five ships from Bristol in May 1498, Cabot's mission was shrouded in mystery. Some vessels bore goods for trade, hinting at economic ambitions. However, history offers no conclusive account of their fate. The Great Chronicle of London speaks of one ship being lost in a storm off of Ireland Ireland, while Cabot and four ships pressed on. For centuries, Cabot's fate remained veiled in obscurity. Did he perish at sea, return discreetly, or forge a new life in the uncharted Americas? With details remaining mysterious, the enigma of Cabot's final voyage continues to captivate the curious, a testament to the mysteries that lie beneath the vast Atlantic expanse. At number seven, Gaspar Corte Real. In the late 15th century, the age of exploration was in full swing, and monarchs across Europe were eager to stake their claim in the New World. King Manuel I of Portugal was no exception, and he sent forth explorers to unravel the mysteries of the uncharted Atlantic. One such explorer was Gaspar Corte Real. In 1500, Corte Real ventured westward and reached Greenland, envisioning it as the fabled Eastern Asia. However, the unforgiving frozen seas denied him a landing. Undeterred, he embarked on a second voyage in 1501, only to face the same icy barriers. Frustration led them to change course, and they stumbled upon land teeming with rivers, pine trees, and berries, a place believed to be Labrador. Tragically, Corte Real's ship vanished into the vast Atlantic, leaving behind a shroud of uncertainty. His brother Miguel sought to uncover the truth in 1502, but met a similar fate, disappearing into the enigmatic waters. The mystery of Gaspar Corte Real and his ill-fated voyagers endures a testament to the treacherous allure of the Atlantic's uncharted realms. At number six, Miguel Corte Real. In the early 16th century, 
history, Miguel embarked on a fateful voyage to rescue his brother, Gaspar, who, like I just said, vanished during earlier expeditions. See, Miguel had invested a lot of money into his brother's trips, and his promise of newfound lands hung in the balance, motivating his pearliest quest. As Miguel's ships ventured into the vast expanse, they split up, each scouring the coast in search of Gaspar. Yet when the time came to rendezvous, Miguel's vessel was conspicuously absent, vanished, lost to the relentless embrace of the Atlantic. The tale takes an intriguing twist in 1912, when markings on the Digonhan rock hinted at Miguel's journey to New England. A cryptic message etched into stone suggested that he became chief of the Indians. However, scholarly skepticism has cast doubt on this myth, leading Miguel's fate concealed to the annals of maritime enigmas. In 1503, the last surviving brother, Vasco Añez Corte Real, planned another the rescue mission for his two brothers. King Manuel I funded the two ships, but would not permit Vasco himself to sail with them. The expedition returned in the fall without having found any trace of either brother. At number 5, the 1955 RAF Shackleton Aircraft Disappearance. It's a brisk January day in 1955, and two Shackleton aircraft from number 42 Squadron RAF are embarking on separate missions over the Atlantic. Routine patrols, they thought, but destiny had something more mysterious in store. With a mere six minutes of each other, these aircraft took off, soon vanishing into the boundless expanse of the Atlantic, never to be seen again. Some have speculated that a catastrophic mid-air collision occurred, shrouding both aircraft in a veil of mystery. Yet the intrigue deepens, for the wreckage of one plane resurfaced a staggering 11 years later, far from the presumed accident site, a haunting puzzle that endures as one of the most perplexing chapters in aviation history. At number four is the free life balloon. The Free Life Rosier balloon launched in 1970 for an unprecedented Atlantic crossing, and it's a tale of daring and tragedy. Piloted by Malcolm Brayton with Rodney Anderson and Palma Brown on board, the balloon utilized a unique helium and hot air combination. Despite warnings from experienced balloonists, the launch in perfect weather was a spectacle, with a seven-story balloon soaring amid cheering crowds. But disaster struck within 30 hours of launch as the altitude maintaining mechanism failed during a severe storm. The crew on board sent a distress signal and attempted to ditch in the Atlantic around 600 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. Their plea for rescue was their last communication. Intensive search efforts involving multiple agencies proved futile, leaving the fate of the free life and its brave crew shrouded in a mystery, a poignant reminder of the Atlantic's unforgiving nature. At number three, the Vivaldi brothers. Bandino and Ugolino Vivaldi embarked on a daring voyage from Genoa to India via the Atlantic in 1291. The two armed galleys sailed down the Moroccan coast towards the Cape Nun, but vanished without a trace. This expedition was one of the earliest Atlantic voyages since the fall of the Western Roman Empire, and in the 14th century, Sor Leon de Vivaldo, Ugolino's son, tried to find them, reaching Mogadishu but unable to proceed to Axum due to their security issues. In 1455, another seafarer, Antonio Uso di Mare, claimed to have met survivors who told one of the galleys straddling in the Sea of Guinea and the other captured on the Senegal River's coast. Yet the fate of the Vivaldi brothers remains a perplexing maritime mystery. At number two is the Light Heart Balloon, a balloon that embarked on a daring quest seeking to conquer the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean from the skies. Colonel Thomas Lee Gatch Jr. was a man with a vision, crafting this ambitious venture. Imagine a colossal balloon suspended beneath it are a cluster of 10 helium balloons, which made the entire thing designed for prolonged high altitude flight. The concept was to remain at a constant altitude, harnessing the jet stream's power to whisk Gatch solo from Pennsylvania to Europe in just over two days. The journey began on February 18, 1974, as Lightheart ascended into the twilight. But adversity struck, as during his ascent, one helium balloon burst. Forced to shed precious ballast, Gatch's dreams of cruising at 12,000 meters were dashed. He settled for 11,000 meters, still ambitious. For hours, Gatch maintained radio contact with airliners, altering their courses to avoid his colossal balloon. His last transmission reached BOAC Flight 853 on February 19, 1974, and after that, silence engulfed the Lightheart. They Days after, the Liberian freighter or Meridian caught sight of the balloon, now hovering precariously at a mere 305 meters and instead drifting towards Africa, far from its intended course. Only eight of the ten balloons remained inflated. Now the gondola was designed for a water landing, yet the Lightheart and Gatch mysteriously vanished without a trace. 
At number one is the 1951 Atlantic C-124 disappearance. As this plane was en route from Roswell, New Mexico to Suffolk, England, making a pit stop in Limestone, Maine. It was a routine flight until it radios a mayday to the USCGC Casco reporting a cargo hold fire. The decision was made to ditch in the Atlantic while daylight lingers. It was an intact landing and survivors came onto inflatable rafts and a Boeing B-50 Superfortress was on its way to escort them to safety. But here's where the plot thickens. When Casco arrived, Arrives at the ditching's point, the aircraft and its occupants have vanished into thin air. British planes, submarines, warships, and even the USS Coral Sea join the search, but all they find is charred plywood and a briefcase. The survivors' bodies are never recovered. The official reports suggest the fuel fire caused the plane's descent, but there was no conclusive report of anything unusual before the crash. Then there's a shadowy specter of Soviet involvement with high-ranking military personnel on board. A chilling maritime mystery that leaves us with more questions than answers. Perhaps one day these mysteries will unravel, shedding light on the enigmatic events that unfolded beneath the waves. As always, if there's a lost Atlantic voyage you think I've missed, feel free to let me know down in the comments. This has been AJ with Most Amazing, and I'll catch you all in another video. Peace out.